Hello friends. In my previous video, I talked about integrating Spring Boot application with AWS Secrets Manager. However, that method works for text or JSON based key value pair properties. But there are situations where the application needs binary secrets like certificates, JKS file, .p12 file, etc. And the application needs this to be present on the file system to refer to. To cater to this use case, we'll be taking a look today at Secret Store CSI driver with AWS provider. The Secret Store CSI driver is an implementation of CSI which stands for Container Storage Interface, which is a standard for exposing block and file storage systems to containerized workloads. Now, in order to understand the concept better, imagine that you have an AWS EKS cluster here at the bottom and we also have AWS Secrets Manager. Now there are two secrets, application A.JKS and application B.JKS. Note that these both are binary secrets and not uh, text or JSON key value pairs. Now the EKS cluster has two nodes. Node 1 is running pod A and node 2 is running pod B. Now pod A has its own associated IAM role and a service account. Now the IAM role with which the pod A is associated needs to have access to retrieve the secret from the AWS Secrets Manager, otherwise this will not work. Now in the pod A's YAML definition, we'll be creating a volume which specifies the CSI driver with AWS provider, which in turn connects to AWS Secrets Manager, fetches the secrets and makes it available as a volume. The pod A can then mount the volume using volume mounts. Pod A can then refer to the JKS file using the path that was provided in the volume mount. Same applies with pod B. So this is how the CSR driver will work by fetching the secret from the secret manager and making it available as a volume, which the pods can then mount it using volume mounts. Let's move on to some demo to understand this better. Now in order to start, we'll first need to install the secret store CSI driver. This is the documentation page for that. And if you scroll down here, there's a step to install the CSI driver using Helm commands. So let's run this two commands one by one. First is to add the repo to the Helm repo list. So the repo has been added. Next is to run the helm install command to install the secret store CSR driver. It installs it in the cube system namespace. This might take a while to install, so I'll pause the video here. Okay, the driver has been installed. Once it's installed successfully, you'll see a output like this. Once we have installed the CSI driver, let's take a look at the next step. If you scroll down at the bottom, here they have given steps to install the secret providers, which in our case is AWS provider. So let's open this link. So this is the GitHub link, which will have steps how to install it. So in the requirement section, it says first, we need to install the CSI secret store driver, which we have already done. Now moving down, it says install the AWS provider and here is the kubectl apply command for that. So here is the entire GitHub link for that. I have downloaded this uh, YAML file already. So let me just kubectl apply that. AWS provider installer.yaml. So it has created the required resources as you see from the output. Now that the provider is installed, let's go ahead with the creation of secret. Now I'm on the AWS console in AWS secrets manager. And as you see, there's no secrets here. So let's create one. But since we want to create a binary secret, uh, the AWS management console doesn't let you create a binary secret from the web console. It has to be created using AWS CLI. So let me go to the CLI and run this command. AWS secrets manager create secret. 
then the name of the secret I'm giving is my dash application dash secret and then the description as a JKS file for application A this can be any description and the next flag is dash dash secret binary indicating that this is a binary secret and the next uh, argument is important you see how it's referred to as file b colon slash slash uh, that's how a file on the file system is uh, referred and it i've given dot slash application a dot jks because this file application a dot jks is in my current directory if you want to give an absolute path uh, where your file is you can do so let's go ahead and run this command So it printed out the ARN, which means the secret creation is successful. Now, if we go back to the console and I hit refresh here, it will show me the secret that was created using CLI. Next, we'll create a resource of kind secret provider class. Now I have a file called secret provider.yaml and this is the content of the file. As you see, the kind here is secret provider class. I'm giving the name as my secret provider class. The important section is what follows uh, in the spec section. The provider here is AWS. This is because we are using the AWS provider. Now under parameters objects, this is where you will specify all the secret related attribute. The object name is nothing but the name of the secret. In this case, my application secret. Now, if we go back to the AWS console, this is the same name with which we had created the secret. That same name has to be provided in the object name. And the object type is specified as secrets manager. That's because we are using AWS secrets manager uh, and the AWS provider. So this has to be secrets manager. Now let's take a look at the pod definition. So I have a pod.yaml here. If you see the contents, I'm giving the name of the pod as CSI test. Uh, the service account name here is URSA service account. Uh, now, if you're not aware of URSA or IAM roles for service account, I have in-depth detailed uh, video, uh, a separate video on IRSA. Uh, if you're not aware of that, please take a look at that first. But in essence, uh, IRSA, what that does is it gives the pod all the required access uh, to connect to any service. In, in this uh, case, it's going to be the AWS Secrets Manager. So by giving the service account name as IRSA service account, this service account has the required roles to fetch the secret from AWS Secret Manager. Scrolling down in the container section, I have the container called CSI test image can be anything. Uh, it's your application image for this demo purpose. I'm using Nginx. The important section is the volume section here. The name of the volume can be anything. I've given secret store in line. Now the CSI driver has to be provided here. Uh, the CSI driver name will be secret store CSI KHS.io. In the volume attributes, the secret provider class name has to be the same name uh, of the secret provider class that you will be creating. So in this case, it's my secret provider class. If you scroll down, the pod is referring to the same name here. And now once the volume is there, uh, the other attribute is the volume mount. The name of the volume mount has to match uh, the name that was provided in the volume section and the mount path gives the path where you want to mount this uh, secret. So when, when this application starts running, uh, the secrets which we have in the AWS secrets manager would be mounted under path slash MNT slash secrets store. Now these are the two definitions. Uh, let's go ahead and apply these uh, one by one. So first I'll apply the secrets uh, provider. That's applied successfully. Next let's uh, deploy the pod. I'll say kubectl apply dash f pod.yaml. The pod is created. Let's see kubectl get pods. And it says the pod is running. Now let's see whether the secret is actually mounted or not. 
so we'll do kubectl exec dash it csi test dash dash bash so now i am inside the pod let's take a look at slash mnt first okay so there's a directory under mnt called secret store and under that if you see there's a file created named my application secret this is nothing but the secret that we had created here now you might wonder that this is a jks file but how is the name coming as my application secret shouldn't this have been something called application a.jks we can achieve that with a small configuration so let's exit out of this and let's edit the secret prodder yaml now under the object name and after the object name and object type let's provide object alias which is nothing but the file name that you want to be created uh, corresponding to this secret now this can be any file that you expect right let's say i want this to look like application a dot jks now i'll save this i'll have to delete the pod first and recreate it so i'll say kubectl delete dash f pod dot yaml this has deleted the pod and now i'll apply this again note this will refer to the new secret provider class which has the object alias so we'll do kubectl get po again and the pod is running so let's run the exec command again and now if i take a look at slash mnt slash secret store okay here i see the same name again something went wrong okay we edited the file but we never applied this secret provider so let me exit it first let me delete the pod again now i'll apply the secret provider class again apply dash f okay now it's updated and now if i create the pod again let's exec into the pod and do a ls dash l m n t there you go now the file name you see is application dash a dot jks that's because the alias that we gave here uh, in the secret provider yaml this is nothing but the file name with which the secret will be mounted on the file system now this was a sample app with nginx image but let's say it can be any spring boot application um, this way you can mount any jks file in any path that you want and within spring boot application properties you can refer to that jks file uh, while the spring boot is coming up this file would already be mounted and available at the path that it expects so that was in a nutshell how the secret store csi driver works I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.